You're tuned in to The Keetra Show and listening to SOB, Style of Business, the podcast with your host, Keetra. We aim to highlight the ongoing trek of entrepreneurs and business owners from around the globe, featuring stories that recount their struggles, experiences, and inevitable road to success and self-fulfillment. Welcome to SOB. This podcast is being brought to you by my inspiring new book titled Courage is a Muscle, Using Heart to Power Your Entrepreneurial Dreams. You can grab your copy today on Amazon. Hey, what's up, y'all? Thanks so much for tuning in to another hot episode of SOB, Style of Business, the podcast. This is your host, Keetra. And today we have a wonderful, a hot guest on the line. We're going to be talking about all things wellness, health, fitness, specifically here within the Houston community and beyond. And so the guest we have today, the person that I'm speaking to is the wonderful Miss Shalita White. She is the founder and CEO, the owner, the creator of House of Energy, which is a indoor cycling studio, and she specializes in rhythmic cycling. So, you know, it's going to be a good chat. Miss Shalita, how you doing? Go ahead and drop that introduction for us and let's let's get spinning. <laughs> let's let's get spinning on the <laughs> conversation. How you kicking today? How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for having me today. I'm really excited to be here um, to let you guys know about House of Energy and, and the great things we have going on here. How are you doing? I am doing well. I'm doing even better now that I'm able to grab a couple of moments of your time. And I'm I'm really excited about this conversation because it seems like more people are really taking the initiative to get control of not only like the fitness, but, you know, health and wealth and, and health, well, wealth too, wealth too. Uh, but health and wellness in general. And so, you know, like I said, when I, when you and I first connected, I was like, yeah, she, you know, not only that, but it was just like the inspiration behind what you were doing. So I said, I've got to have you on the show to talk about it and to really just kind of share in your vision. So, you know, let's, let's, let's kick it out. I, I want to learn more. Okay. So where do we start? Where do we start? You got so much stuff going. Tell us about, um, I have a, tell, yeah, go, go ahead. You got it. I have a lot going. Um, one of the things, um, what you mentioned is, you know, the inspirational part. Um, I definitely believe that transformation starts within. And so before we can ever transform physically, we have to transform our minds and our spirit. And so the, the house of energy aims to, to get to the spirit and the, in the mind, the mental part of your fitness journey. Exactly. Yeah. And that's a, that's another, um, I don't want to say hot topic, but that's, one of the main factors in really, like you said, the, the transformation process. And sometimes it can be difficult because a lot of people are, you know, going through a journey of healing and, um, you know, just trying to to not really rid themselves of, of, of trauma. But I guess you could, you know, say that, but I'm just saying like to really extend beyond what you've experienced in the past. And so just, you know, knowing that you really work to not only transform the outside, because, you know, we got to have a body looking good. <laughs> You know, but 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 also the inner spirit. And like I said, that's one of the things that really uh, that's one of the things that I gravitated towards once I was able to come in and uh, experience your class when I kind of made a clown of myself. But I ended up, you know, thinking because I was like, you know, a friend invited me. like, Hey, let's you know, let's go and I want you to check out this class. And so, of course, I went in. All right. Well, you know, I'm not going to put any expectations on myself because, you know, this is new for me. But I'm telling you like that. Spinning is really, or cycling, that's, that's really, um, you got to have your mind, you know, really set. And so not only that, like you kind of walked me through all of that, but then when you started like, you know, sharing those words of encouragement and, you know, just kind of digging down deep and just giving really, giving people the motivation to, to continue. I was like, man, I got to learn more about Mr. Leader and figure out, you know, where that comes from. So, you know, I think that's amazing. And tell us like how, what inspired you? Like why the house of energy? Um, originally when I started, when I first started cycling, I felt like there was a lack of diversity in the sport, um, or, or in the, in the yeah. gym when it came to cycling, especially with the music, especially with just the instructors. Um, I started the house of energy to be a place where everybody felt welcome. Yeah. I wanted people to feel like this is a place where, you know, I can listen to the music I like and I can be free to be myself, whether it's in size or just um, in a diverse situation, like everybody was welcome. And I didn't want, I never want people to feel like, um, oh, this is all 
definitely for super fit people or people that are of this size or or, or this height. Yeah. I wanted everybody to feel like this is something that they could do. Um, that's what inspired me to start it. And then um, I wanted something that would give back to people's spirit. I, a lot of people are hurting, and I say that a lot. Um, and we don't know what other people are going through. And so the House of Energy was a place for people to release kind of any burdens or anything that's no longer serving them and they can release it in this moment to no longer take it with them um after class um so especially during a pandemic and everybody a lot of people were going through so many mental changes and emotional changes and wellness changes that i felt like there needed to be a space where people could just release yeah yeah no and that's definitely a, a wonderful place to be able to do it within your studio and and one of the things that I really enjoyed was just the, the you know the music in general and give me a give me a, an overview because I'm still you know learning a little bit more about the sport but rhythmic cycling versus you know outdoor cycling cycling you know like or or indoor cycling rather versus outdoor cycling like what are I mean of course we know like physically you're outside and the other one you're you're indoors but like what are the other main components of like cycling indoors and also could you um, give us a little bit of explanation on you know spinning versus cycling. Are they the same thing? And I'm really just asking for myself because, like I said, I'm new to it. So I'm like, oh, okay, is that the same thing? Is this you know? So like, how do you how do you differentiate between those? Well, spinning is indoor cycling. Spinning is actually the main company who started it. Okay, got it. Um, but it is indoor cycling. What I do is what we call a rhythmic cycling. So that means we ride to the beat of the music. So everything we do will be. Um, centered around how heavy or how light or how quick or how fast or how slow the beat is. Um, every pedal stroke will go with, it's almost like a dance on the bike. Yeah. Or as, of course, when you're outdoor cycling, there's an event that is more RPM-based. Um, you're definitely not doing all these extra moves, tap-backs, and push-ups on the bike. Um, what I do is more of a, um, it's just kind of more of a routine on the bike. So we don't sit that much. We pretty much stand 85% of the time um, and do different routines on the, on the bike. Got it. Yeah. And i tell you what, like right now, one of, one of the, the hugest lessons that I've learned with, within my uh, the few sessions that I've been able to experience is that I was, when I first started, I was doing it wrong. <laughs> you know, you, you kind of, <laughs> you, cause I, I'm telling you when we got started on that session, and, you know, you know, I'm thinking, oh, hey, I can I can ride a bike, you know, I can ride a bike. You know, I got these expectations of what I'm thinking it's going to be. But like, I'm not even lying within the first three to five minutes. I was like, you know, where where's the front door? But it's not only until I learned after. When you, <laughs> I know you were looking like, OK, yeah, she she about to leave. And I'm thinking, you know, OK, that little girl just slide out the slide out the front door. Ain't nobody going to notice, you know, but um. And of course, I wouldn't do that. You know, I'm, I'm going to stay the course. I might be a little wimpy and, and completing, but I wanted to experience it because I have heard so, so many wonderful things about it. But then I learned later, you were telling me something about the whole method of, of you know, doing a full revolution and actually going through the process. I was I was doing it wrong. So t- tell us a little bit about like how you uh, go to go to the, you know, give us give us this. When people come in. Right. And they are the first, you know, first time students and they are kind of hesitant. And, you know, you like 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 I was, you know, thinking it's just riding a bike. And then you explain like, hey, it's a little bit, you know, uh, more, uh, I guess, more um, strategic than that. Like, how do you go about just letting people know, hey, you know, you coming in, you're going to start here. This is what you need to do. And you're going to be all right. Like you can make it through the 45 minutes, you know, and really um, have an efficient workout. So the first thing I do is help um, all my new students set their bike up because the first part of of having a comfortable ride is to have the correct bike mechanics. So your bike needs to be set up correctly. Your seat needs to be set up, your handlebars. I need to see how far forward or back you should be. Um, And then I actually get on the bike next to them and have them pedal, teach them how to use the resistance knob. We normally have uh, music playing before class starts. So I'll have, I'll, I'll do kind of like a demo, especially if I have a lot of new students, I'll do a demo where I'll um, get on the bike myself along with you and 
actually show you how to do catch your cadence. I'll give you the cadence one, two, one, two. I'll show you some of the moves. But the most important thing is to keep moving. And I tell all my new people this. Yeah. I don't care if you do any of these tricks on the bike or any of the, the routines. I want you to keep moving. When we when I say turn it up the knob, I want you to turn up the resistance. When I say turn it down, turn it down. But whatever you do, you keep moving and know that you can make it to the end. So it's always my goal for any new person is to, to keep talking to them, um, keep encouraging them, keep moving it's almost done. Like you almost made it and everything you thought you couldn't do when you first came in the room, you're at the end of it now. And I take, and I always say in class, the bike is take, the bike is a small portion of your life. So if you're giving up on this, then what else are you giving up on in life? Mm -hmm. And to me, the bike teaches you how to persevere and to push through things that are uncomfortable and uncharted territory. Exactly. Y'all, this this is what I love. This is what I love to hear. Um, and like I said, I just can't get enough of that inspirational part that you bring to your classes. And I tell you what, now I want to let's let's dig more into your the inspiration behind your own, you know, fitness journey, you know, because a lot of times we, you know, it, it takes turning points in our lives to where, you know, we decide we're going to go in this direction or maybe we want to go in that direction. But like share a little bit about your own personal fitness journey, like what what really inspired you to, um, you know, take this into, into, uh, uh, to prioritize it rather? Like what, what inspired your journey? Um, a few things. So when I first started my own fitness journey, I was about 230 pounds and I was miserable. I'm only five, one, I'm five foot one. So I'm not a tall person. So it doesn't even look good on me. And I was yeah. miserable and I hate it. And it's, and I couldn't even feel comfortable in my skin. And I decided to start working out and I did. And it was funny because when I started working out, I was like, I'm going to join this gym and try this, you know, try this spin class. And my first <laughs> class, I kid you not, I was like, oh, no, yeah. I'm never coming <laughs> right <back> here. <laughs> I'm not feeling, yeah. So I was like, I'm not coming back. And I remember the instructor, her name was Janelle. And she looked at me and she was like, don't quit. You got it. That's all she said. And I stayed on that bike for 45 minutes. So I go home and I'm like, I'm going back because there's no way I'm going to let this bike defeat me. It was a bike. Yeah. Right. So I go back and I kept going back and I kept going back. And I was, and I, it helped me. The bike is what helped me to lose weight. Of course, with healthy eating and whatnot, but it was like the bike that gave me the confidence to know that I could do anything. Yeah. And so then when it was my turn to, and I had been thinking about being an instructor for many, many years before I ever got my certification um, five years ago. And when I got my certification, I was like, okay, I got my certification. What do I do now? And my mm -hmm. wife said, are you going to get a job? I was like, a job? <laughs> right. Oh, girl, no. Right. right. a job? <laughs> was like, you went and got this certification. Are you going to go get a job? I'm like, well, let me go apply for something. Right. And I did. And they called back. And then I looked at her and I was like, oh, Lord, they done called back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. And so I went to the audition. And it, well, she drove me to the audition. And I was sweating bullets. And I had my routines together and my little note cards. And I was scared to death. And they hired me on the spot. And I would always play a little hip hop, a little hip hop, a little this, a little that. And I started getting a, a following of people. They would like, they, and they would say, Shalita, why don't you give us an all hip hop ride? And I'm like, I cannot do that. And they're like, Shalita, give us an all hip hop ride. Right. Yeah. And one day I gave them a hip hop Tuesday. Wow. And then it just started from there. And then everybody started coming. Um, but with my own, with my own weight loss journey, you know, it's a journey. And sometimes my weight is up, sometimes it's down right now. It's down. Um, but I feel like because I have my own struggles, my own internal struggles, that that's where I can see it in other people. And I mm -hmm. understand what they're going through and I understand what they're dealing with because I've had my own and I can tell, you know, tell them, hey, don't quit. Keep going because I've had to tell myself that. And somebody once told me don't quit to keep going. Right. Yeah. No, that's that's definitely the truth. And I, I mean, that's isn't that it's almost 
ironic the way things work out. You know, you 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 don't want the job, but deep, deep down you want it, right? <laughs> right? Like you know, you yeah. you need to to have that experience, and now you were able to. Well, later on, you were able to really branch off and to do your own thing. And so, like like how did like how did you feel like once you knew that people were supporting you and you had the, this this tribe of people like, hey, Shalita, go ahead and start your own deal. You know, you you can do this. And and from there, like it, it turned into like the house of energy. Like, what was the feeling? What was the feeling? Like, how did you? How did that? How did that transpire? Um, so 2019 is when I actually started the house of energy and name only. That's the name that was given to me, like in a dream. Oh wow! And so I I went and and got the name, but I honestly did nothing with it. I sat on it, and I always say a dream deferred is not a dream denied. Like I yeah. knew I wanted a studio. I knew I wanted my own thing, but it wasn't time. And so I, I, I kept working. Well, 2020, the pandemic hit. And, um, of course the gyms laid us off. Yeah. And I was like, well, a lot of my students were like, Shalita, do you have a bike at home? And I'm like, yeah, I have a bike at home. So we started doing FaceTime rides. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so we would do those like three days a week to keep us, you know, semi-fit, right? Yeah. And um, I remember seeing on Facebook this um, this guy, Jose, and he had 12 bikes. And I told my wife, I said, what if I bought 12 bikes, put them on the back of a truck and just went to the parking row? Do you think people would show up? Mm. And she said, hmm, well... There's nothing to it but to do it. To do it, yeah. <laughs> right. So we contact Jose, and Jose, we're like, hey, can we come look at your bikes? So we literally went down to League City and um, bought these bikes. I mean, no building, no schedule, no nothing. It was really a faith, a, a huge leap of faith for me. Mm-hmm. And we bought these bikes. And online, I found this trailer online. And we bought this trailer oh, and we hitched wow. it to the back of my wife's truck. Right. Y'all ready now. So now what do we do? Right. So I text, I still had, you know, phone numbers from my students and I texted them and I said, Hey, I got 12 bikes. Anybody want to come meet me in the park and ride? And 12 people responded. They said, Shalita, I'll meet you. And that's what we did. We went to the park, to the public park. I set up the bike and we had a Bluetooth speaker and I didn't have a mic and we rode. And I was like, okay, how did y'all like it? They were like, are we coming back tomorrow? <laughs> right. <laughs> and I'm like, um, okay, we can come back tomorrow. Right, go get the truck ready. Right. <laughs> and that's how it started. And then I started um, meeting gym owners who would let me come to their gym and and um, have classes inside at their gym. And that's how I got started. Wow. that. That's now that's an entrepreneurial journey like that. Those are the types of stories that really get you going and, and like I said, ultimately inspire other people to make moves. And, you know, of course, we know the entrepreneurial journey is like any any journey, even within life. You know, it's not always smooth sailing. But like as an entrepreneur, what are some things that have encouraged you to continue to, to, to progress and to move forward within your own journey? Um. I really think just knowing that I'm on the right path keeps me going. I feel like even when I want to give up some days, like giving up is not, it's the same thing that I tell you guys, right? Giving up is really not an option because when you're on a faith journey, it's not always going to be easy. And just because it's not easy doesn't mean it's not what you're meant to do. Right. Um, So I feel like that keeps me going. I feel like honestly, my wife keeps me, keeps me grounded and, Cause I'll spaz out and I'll be, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this is not it. <laughs> God is no. punishing. Right. No, that's not. <laughs> I'll go from zero to one hundred, right? Right. Yeah, but if she's like, be quiet. Are you hungry? <laughs> 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 like, what is the matter? Are you thirsty? Right. And I'm like, okay, fine. I'm okay. But it's. I think you just have to write down the dream. Mm. I wrote down the dream in 20, 2018, I think. I got the actual confirmation in 2019. And I often refer back to that written down dream to know that, hey, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. And stay the course. Um, I feel like 
you have to find some way to practice some self care so you're not so caught up in your in what you're doing that you're not taking care of yourself. Yeah. Um. So I managed to do that. I mean, whether that's you know uh, stepping away from the computer, whether that's turn off the phone for the day, for the evening, watching the movie, taking some quick vacation. You have to do something to take care of yourself. Yeah. Um, and just knowing that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, you no, know, just keeping it in my forefront of my mind and speaking positivity over myself and my circumstances that this two shop has is always going to get better. Yes, 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 yes. And I, I love what you just mentioned about, you know, writing down your vision and that you receive confirmation and speaking the positivity. Um, but I, w- I want to ask this because I know there may be somebody listening that's like, oh, OK, OK, she know she she knew or she felt that that was her life purpose and she stepped into it. There's some people who are confused and may not know what their life mission is or what their purpose is. And, you know, we seek that validation or we seek that confirmation to say, OK, hey, yeah, this is what you should be doing. And you mentioned like, OK, you receive your uh, validate your confirmation rather that, OK, yeah, you need to pursue what you're doing with with uh, House of Energy and cycling. Like what what was that moment for you or what was that what was that actual confirmation just to put it in context? Well, for, well, in, what's crazy is I originally for the longest didn't know what my life mission, mission was. Yeah. I knew I was put on earth to help people. I've always felt like I was put on earth to, to heal people. A lot of people come to me for like healing. Like um, we always call our house the respite house because yeah. it's like somebody in the family is always living over here. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so where people come to get like to decompress for right. some reason, it's always been this how our house is inside. No, that's always been a part of me. Um, I didn't know for a long time. And then I started the cycling thing because, well, it just seemed like something I should do. Yeah. I was just kind of doing something. But then for me, when it became confirmation, when I felt like, honestly, when I felt like the devil was trying to take it from me, like if I was hitting a lot of, op- a lot of um, criticism and going mm-hmm. through a lot of things, like at the big gym that I worked at, you know, I was one of their best instructors, but I was always receiving so much backlash and criticism. Mm. And it's, oh, the music's not diverse enough. Oh, this is not, or this is too loud, or it's this, or it's too full, which I don't understand how that's the problem. Yeah. And I was like, it's got to be more to, to this because there's something that keeps wanting to take it from me. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so when I wanted to leave the big gym, I was like, well, I'm just going to go ahead and start me a studio you know that's how I wasn't that's what it was in my head and when I got the name house of energy for me it was a dream like a lot of confirmation you have to look and really be in tune and get rid of the noise and distractions because when house of energy came to me I had left the big big box gym for like a month and a half like I was like well if you don't like the way I do things I'll just leave and that's pretty much what I did and during that time when I was kind of in isolation and I'm just really not doing anything. Um, that's when House of Energy, the name came to me. Like it came to me in a dream. But it's like I had to get to a point where I could really hear and mm-hmm. feel and see. Because sometimes we can't hear and feel and see what we're supposed to do because there's too much distraction all around us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're too busy. It's too much noise. So you can't hear it. And for me, that's what it was. I had to. I had to just kind of almost um, isolate myself, but I wasn't depressed. I just didn't want to be bothered. Oh, yeah. And yeah. and it was in those moments that I was able to really have some clarity about where my life was going. Wow. Hindsight is absolutely wonderful, you know, and it's like, it's a joy to look back and, you know, see your journey and even the, the parts that were not so cute, <laughs> you know, you you're thankful for them, you know, because they've allowed you to really grow and to create something that's your own. Like to me, there's nothing better than having your own, whatever it is. Right. Um, right. Yeah. So I, I think that's wonderful. Um, and I, I don't know, like I, I, I just, I just see so much, so many wonderful things um, transpiring, uh, you know, with what you're doing, just kind of keeping people inspired and motivated and really just giving them, uh, the courage to move forward day by day. So that's excellent. So kudos to you for that, Shalita. And 
Yes, ma'am. And I also want to, I know we're getting ready to wrap up here shortly, but if you could just share some words of encouragement to the listeners, maybe there's an aspiring entrepreneur, maybe there's an aspiring uh, personal trainer or, you know, spin instructor, just anybody that might need that extra, you know, word of encouragement. I would say just take the step. I feel like sometimes we're afraid to take the leap because what will happen? But my question for them is, well, what would happen if you don't take the, take the leap? Mm. And sometimes you just have to trust God enough to know that he has, has um, especially if you know that you're supposed to be moving, don't be afraid to move. Don't be afraid to take the step or take the leap because you never know where that one step will take you. And if you never take the step, then you'll never, you'll never go anywhere. Right. So that for me is, is my best advice is just step out, step out on faith and just know that it's going to be okay. I know it's scary and change is is scary, but what's on the other side is more than you could ever ask for or imagine. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. And appreciate that. And before you leave, uh, for those of us who are in the, the Houston area, um, definitely, I mean, go ahead and, and share some information on your classes, where they can check those out, where you're located. Y'all, we, we, we haven't got, she, she hasn't started the National uh, House of Energy Cycling Tour yet. So we, you know, we can't, we're not going to put that out there yet. Um, but I am going to speak it, you know, who knows, like, I don't know, who knows what will happen by this time next year. But definitely for those within the Houston area, Shalita, let us know where we can check out more information on your classes, get signed up, and also learn more about yourself. Um, yeah, you can. We actually have a website, www.houseofenergy, H-A-U-S of energy, I-N-N-E-R-G-Y.com. You, um, you'll see more about me, about our other instructors. Also, my class schedule is there. I have classes in spring off of Kirkendall and Cypresswood. Um, 45 in Airtex, and also Bellway 8 in Lee Road, um, Sunday through Wednesdays, actually, or Saturday through Wednesdays. So six classes to serve you guys. And coming in the fall, House of Energy is getting a studio. Oh, wow. Congratulations <laughs> on that. Well, you know, what? Well, since we add the, the cherry and the whipped cream and the toppings and all that, like, would you, <laughs> would you look, I, you know I'm going to do extra. Like, but would you consider doing like a national tour? Like if somebody said, hey, Shalita, we want House of Energy to come out and just tour like different, you know, I don't know, parks to, to do, you know, do a couple of classes um, and to make that an event. Like, you know, there's so many, I guess there's so many things that you can do now with, with fitness and wellness. Like I know a lot of people are taking it on the road, but would that be something that you you're, that you guys would consider in the future? Yeah, that's actually part of what our business model is to still have our mobile aspect to our business. So, yeah, we're definitely willing to come to your city. Let me know where you guys are um, and do classes. And we're also partnering with um, our Trap Zumba uh, colleague to do a Trap Zumba meets Trap Cycle um, collaboration and take it um, nationwide as well. All right. Perfect. Yeah, let's make it global. I'm, I'm here for all of that. And we definitely appreciate the wonderful work that you do, the, the, you know, like I said, the inspiration, the fitness, just, you know, just being a wonderful uh, human being in general. We appreciate you and definitely thank you so much for being a guest, Shalita. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Have a great rest of your day. You too. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for hanging out with us here on SOB. We hope this episode has been resourceful. If you'd like to check out the latest articles or follow Keetra's website updates, just log on to Keetra.com or follow her on Twitter at K-E-E-T-R-I-A.